Well, hello there. Today we're going to be talking briefly about SSH or Secure Shell. Now, when starting a topic like this, I found it's best to start out by describing what the item is and why you might want to use it, so that's what this video is going to be all about. Now, Secure Shell is a network protocol, which basically means a set of rules, a set of guidelines that tells your computer how to send data from one place to the other. Now, that may sound kind of familiar. Telnet is a similar protocol, FTP, other things like that, where you're sending data from your computer to a server. They're all networking protocols. However, SSH is slightly different because it is secure, as the name implies. Basically, when you're sending data over something like Telnet or FTP, you're sending it entirely unencrypted. So if you type in a password on one end, it goes plain text over the internet, over your local network, wherever you're sending it, to the server, and someone in the middle can possibly see it, can possibly take your password and then use it later. Using something like SSH, the chance of something like that happening is much, much lower. And of course, just like Telnet and FTP, SSH can be used for transmitting data, for transmitting commands from one place to another, and for transmitting files. It can be used anywhere in the world, from one computer to another, from different platforms to different platforms. For example, there are SSH clients and servers available for all major modern platforms such as Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, iPhone, and whatever else you can probably think of. So throughout this series of videos, I'm going to be showing you how to set up an SSH server, how to connect to that server with a client that we will also install. In using an SSH client, I'll show you how to use it with a password and with a key, so you don't always have to use that password to log in. And then eventually, we'll talk about sharing files over SSH, port forwarding over SSH, and even forwarding applications from Linux over SSH. If I hadn't mentioned it already, it's entirely possible to take an application running on one of your Linux machines and through SSH pipe the data from that into another machine anywhere else in the world so you can see the application running on one computer somewhere else entirely. But basically that's about it for a quick entry into the world of SSH. Next time we'll be talking about installing an open SSH server on Linux and installing the client and how to do the initial connection between the two. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't seen it already, I created a new channel just today called Twill Plays, where I'm going to be doing some singing, some music, some things like that. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow in a news video.